argument is that political kinkonism and constitutionalism are not cannot be bad fellows. Again, if you look at other powers of the president, he is the commander in chief he, uh, of the armed forces. He is the fountain of justice and fountain of honor. But in addition, every he is the source of every law that is made in Ghana. The source of all legislations passed by parliament. They emanate from the executive president. This is because Article 108 of the 1902 Constitution says every bill that has financial implication must come from the executive president. Which bill under the sun would not have financial implication? If for nothing at all, won't, we, won't the state provide money to be used in buying A4 sheets and to be used in photocopying and all that? And so, if you create an arrangement that makes the president the executive and then makes also the president the source of all legislations passed by parliament. It means you are giving the you are giving more powers to executive president rather than checking or reducing or bridling the exercise of those powers. If you look at the executive legislature relations, it also demonstrates um, this weakness I'm talking about. You see, our constitution says the president should appoint majority of his ministers from parliament. And my position is that if you appoint majority of ministers from, your par from parliament, those members of parliament who have been appointed as ministers would in no way fight, no, check you or take um, a contrary view from that of the executive president on the floor of parliament. So they can't check you. Secondly, those members of parliament who have not benefited from ministry appointment would always hear, hear the executive just to be able to catch his eye so that if there is future reshuffle, they will be considered. Thirdly, it's been always difficult for members of parliament who are also ministers to go to the floor of parliament. And so recently, we heard that about 15 or less than 15 people went to parliament and it was difficult for parliament to achieve a quorum because the members of parliament who are supposed to sit are also ministers and they don't find the time. Okay, if you look at the relationship between the executive and the judiciary, I'm also arguing that our constitution does not set a ceiling on the number of judges that our president can appoint to the Supreme Court. And so it gives a lot of influence in empowers to the, to the president to control the judiciary. US, the US, for instance, have a fixed number of judges who sit on the Supreme Court, nine. So they all sit on the case to bring finality um, to that case. But what we have at the moment is that the president can keep appointing, can keep packing his own people into the court. And once you keep packing your own people to the court, it becomes difficult for the court to assert its independence, particularly when there is a case in which the president himself is involved in. If it goes and it is 5-4, um, 5-4 against the president, the next day the president can decide to appoint two more judges to the Supreme Court. So go and review the case. And then it will overturn and then he would um, um, win. Another. I think it doesn't help. Again, our constitution has a provision that also prevents members of parliament from thinking independently and then, you know, on national issues. We have provisions that prevent members from cross-capiting. The idea of cross-capiting is, 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 the, is the idea that, you see, if there is an issue on the floor of parliament, an MPP a member of parliament can say that, look, what the NDC members of parliament are saying is true. And so I want to go and support them. I want to vote with them. Okay, but our constitution has provisions that forbids that. And so in that case, what happens is that you may have one or two dairy members of parliament who comes out openly to speak against their party position. But when they go to the floor of parliament, the party whip system is so strong said that even though they don't like it, they vote for it. So somebody like PC appeal for it several times, spoke against certain things, but he had to vote in favor of it. So the whip system is said that members of parliament vote for their party positions and not positions that checks the exercise of executive power. The current constitutional arrangement runs contrary to the dogmas of constitutionalism and it creates, it makes the executive president a political king corn. And it can only be kept, operated, and maintained by self-seeking, 
self-perpetuating and self-aggrandizing cabals. Every well-meaning Ghanaian who appreciate the dogmas of constitutionalism will call for an overhaul of the constitution such that it can serve as an adequate countervailing mechanism and authority to the powers of the executive president.